Hello everyone and welcome back to Furry Found Footage. This week I'm going back to my commercial archive, which has become vast uh, over recent months. And I'm going to make another top 10 list because that's what I do to unwind. Today's episode is going to be the top 10 cutest cows, sexiest cows, I don't know, in commercials. Cows feature quite prominently in advertising probably because we derive so many food substances, uh, leather, etc., from them. I picked 10 of the cutest cows that I could find, and I'm going to share them with you as well as some backstory surrounding them. Without further ado, here we go. Lasses these days, they're only after one thing. So let me be straight with you, I hate this commercial. I hate the concept, I hate the late 90s, early 2000s Spike TV aesthetic approach. Um, but I will say, if you consider that this is a cow who presents as male, we have a trans man cow and he is a stud. So this is Graham Heifer, the Boddington's cow. And he replaced a TV presenter, Melanie Sykes, as the face of Boddington's beer brand. According to articles that I could find about him, viewers were really confused when he first came out, uh, probably by the fact that his gender is, is kind of up for debate. Um, also, the, the sexual nature of a lot of the ads is pretty ridiculous, although there are moments where even stranger things happen. The ad agency responsible for this gem was Bartle, Bogle, and Haygardy. Interestingly, when this particular ad with the blindfold aired, it received 76 complaints to the Independent Television Commission in the UK, where it was from. Among those complaints were insistence that the commercial is too sexually explicit and it promotes bestiality and homosexuality. So if you're waiting for that other shoe to drop, you understand why the rhetoric that a lot of pure teens nowadays are bandying about comes across as problematic to queer people. Indeed, according to an article on Campaign Live, the very fact that the cow is a male but has udders resulted in five complaints from viewers. And there are also complaints that the ad was shown before 9 p.m. But given that it's an alcohol ad, it wasn't actually allowed to be shown around children's programming. So the complaints were not upheld. Apparently ITC felt that a surreal cartoon wouldn't be taken seriously by viewers, so they didn't really need to change it at all. But it's really interesting considering that if you go back to 99 when this came out, you can see a lot of articles about it talking about this uttered bull and the gender confusion that it results in. And these are the same kind of articles that we got when uh, Barnyard came out, if you remember that movie. Also featuring a male protagonist with an udder, because apparently nobody knows what cows are. But honestly, I cannot help but stand our trans bull friend here. Why don't we go to the next one? Mm, Okay, so this nice short ad was brought to you by My Mustard, which I believe is the French name for Grey Poupon. So in 1970, Grey Poupon bought out My, and it became a label only in France. They phase out the Grey Poupon label in France. So we have that in America, hooray. And we also have this wonderful bowl commercial from probably the mid 70s, early 80s. And this features Richard Williams' wonderful animation of this wonderfully dandy example of a bull complete with a bow tie and no udder, mind you, exclaiming how much he loves my mustard. 
Now, of course, that's a little grim given that we use mustard to put on meat a lot of the time, but hey, maybe he likes it with his cheese. There's one with a pig and one with a rather dashing sheep. They're all quite short, they don't have much going on, but I find them incredibly charming, especially that deep mooing voice that the bull has. Just adorable, and Richard Williams' animation is truly legendary. Every example of it should be preserved. Okay, next up. After years of training, Kellogg's new secret weapon is ready. Ready to fuse your favorite Kellogg cereal with milk in a bar. Introducing Uder the Cow and new Kellogg cereal and milk bars, the delicious, crunchy, crumbly snack. So when hunger hits, milk it. Okay, so this is another situation where we have a cow with an udder and an ostensibly male presenting voice. So we have another trans man cow. This seems very, very common in advertising. And he is some kind of secret agent with an udder powered milk gun that he uses to turn boring cereal into cool bar form cereal. These commercials come from about 2001 and have some really quite charming animation. I love the way Uder rolls his barrel shaped body over in order to get a kill shot on this box of frosted flakes. It's right out of Call of Duty. <laughs> Something I love about researching commercials is that you very quickly find most of the time the uploads are actually done by people who worked on them if not by the company itself. In this case, I found the Uter commercials through George Longley, who wrote and art directed the series of commercials. The animation was produced by Chuck Gamage Animation, and you can really see the charm that they brought to Uter. Definitely check out George Longley. As a final note on this one, I just wanna say, back when this commercial came out, you could actually get a plush of Uter. Is that not the cutest thing you've ever seen? I just love tie-ins like that. Okay, so next up. This is going to be the first of several Lavash, I mean Laughing Cow commercials that I'm going to show you. This one is quite charming, probably because the ad agency Les Producers had Richard Williams direct it. Hey Richard, nice to see you again. This one, if you couldn't tell, is from France in 1989. So this is kind of a standard ad formula that um, Laughing Cow used for several years. They have a bunch of cows and they are saying, no, 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 these cows are too plain, too thin, too weird, too big. We need the perfect cow and that perfect cow is only the laughing cow. And she pops out of the limousine, whatever. Um, but I actually find all the other cows designs quite compelling, probably more than hers. That being said, I really do love the platters number they play right when she pops up. But this is a furry party we have going on. We have giraffes and ostriches wearing clothing. We have cows wearing clothing. Everyone's just kind of milling about, having a great time. It's a really cute setting, a cute concept, and very well executed, of course, by Richard Williams and his team. I'm actually going to show you another Laughing Cow ad in the same vein. These are auditions, and this one was also produced in the 80s, likely by Richard Williams, but it was redubbed in 95 for the UK market. So check this one out. It's not easy finding a star cheese. It can't be too ordinary, too funky, too heavy. To be the all-round star cheese, you need a great personality. Introducing the one and only the Laughing Cow Cheese Spread. Again, same concept, but I really love the cows and lipstick batting their eyelashes as they enter the studio. I'd like to point out again that these are all female characters, even the ones that look male. Because they're cows that produce cheese, they have to be female, otherwise they're trans men. So pretty awesome to see such representation here back in the 80s and 90s. In a little while, I'm going to show you a few more Laughing Cow commercials, but let's just let this one sit for a minute. 
digest it. Okay, how about next? Huh? Smeltietjes! Grappigste snoepje van heel de wereld! Van Bon Bon. Okay. I don't know what the hell is going on in Denmark, but I've been seeing these commercials for years. These are originally from the 90s. There's a whole slew of them, so check out Bon Bon Reclame if you're interested in seeing more. Bon Bon is actually a company that is colossal in Denmark. It all began with Michael Spengsberg, who produced candies with names that he thought children would find funny, such as Seagull Shed, Dog Farts, and Cow Titties. It's kind of amazing that the ad has this cow milking another cow that is non-anthro and while she is milking it, her tits pop out. I'm surprised I can even share this, quite frankly, but in the interest of not being ethnocentric, I'm going to say that sure, yeah, it is funny, I guess, and kids do find that stuff funny. So funny, in fact, that they built something called Bon Bon Land, which has the famous dog fart roller coaster and statues of the big titty cow that are quite popular. I don't really know exactly what made the candies explode like this, but you know what? Good for them. Bon Bon Land opened in 1991. It is still running. It operates from April to October and has all kinds of attractions now, 65 of them according to their website. We consider all this stuff to be quite lewd, quite disgusting, but Europe tends to have a broader view of these kinds of things. They have less of that Puritan shame, so they just kind of take it in stride. I'm sure I've left you with more questions than answers, but I'm going to move on at this point. So for this next one, I'm going to combine two ads, one from 92 and one from 93. These are both Pepsi commercials, so check them out. <laughs> No playoff party would be complete without plenty of Pepsi, and right now is the time to stock up at your favorite store so you can party till the people come home. Some guests are complete bores. It's party time. And some are complete... And this little piggy went long. I got it. I don't got it. No playoff party would be complete without plenty of Pepsi. And right now is the time to stock up at your favorite store. Mmm, chicken salad. <laughs> Not. <laughs> Were those adorable or what? This commercial is urging you to get ready for the Super Bowl by buying lots of Pepsi. And we have these really well animated animals coming into this party, taking off their coats and getting down to business. I really like this cute cow couple that comes in first. The gentleman bull with his little bow tie, which seems to be a bit of a theme. The bull removes his lovely wife's coat. She's got these cute sunglasses, lipstick, and pearls on. And these cows are juxtaposed with the appearance of pigs, chickens, there's even a couple goats. It's the whole barnyard. They have a very Klasky Chupo sensibility to them, but I wasn't able to find out who did the animation. So you'll just have to live without that information for now. Okay, so next up. If you're looking for trouble, you came to the right place. If you're looking for trouble, just look right in my face. I was born standing up and talking back. Frisk energy, so kiss cool. My daddy was so green and I'm a jet because I'm cow. Frisk energy. By now, you're probably thinking that Denmark must be an amazing place, heaven on earth. Um, <laughs> This commercial is from 1996, and despite being mostly in English, yes, it is indeed from Denmark again. A lot of you might see the next two on my list and think that I'm crazy for putting Cowie third, but I think there's a certain degree of diminishing returns when you push a cartoon style too hard. Cowie is basically a rubber hose cartoon who's been airbrushed to hell and back, and she ends up looking like a Jessica Rabbit reject. Now, I do appreciate her design. I do think she's really cute. And I do like that little mm, 
va va voom at the end, but amazingly, she's not my top pick. So if I'm understanding this correctly, frisk energy is some kind of combination of orange juice and milk that may be carbonated, maybe not. Um, if anyone has had frisk energy or any of these products really, feel free to leave a comment and tell me how were they? Were they good? Were they tasty? Were they the worst thing ever? I'm really curious to know more about these foreign products. Next up is my number three pick. I haven't seen you here before. I'm uh, new to the area. What do you think? Lovely. I see you're reading that shocking news about I can't believe it's not butter. Yes. Less than half the saturated fat of butter. I'm made with buttermilk for that fresh butter-like taste. I don't like it. I better know what you do like. I can't believe it's not butter. Can you? <sighs> Seems like there's less of everything these days. <clears throat> okay, there is so much going on in this commercial. This one is from 1998 in the UK. Many of you in the UK may recognize the puppets because they resemble the ones in long-running TV show Spitting Image. And that is because they are in fact directed by John Henderson at Spitting Image Productions. And there's actually a whole series of them. If you guys want to check out some more, I definitely recommend it. There's tons of cute cows. But let's break this down. I love this leopard coat wearing laundromat strumpet. She's hitting on this new guy in town with her four cup fuzzy bra, which given that she has enormous human tits, I'm not sure if that means she also has an udder or if she has four of those human tits hiding under her jacket. She is really coming on strong, shaking her milk makers to try and entice this guy back to the beauties of butter. And quite frankly, with her representing butter, I don't really want whatever I can't believe it's not butter is selling. I will slather my toast in sweet cream salted butter all day if it makes her happy. There's something quite cute about the daisy earrings that she's wearing, which calls to mind another famous cow who you might see a little bit later. She has a face full of makeup, so if you wanted to know what a semi-realistic cow furry would look like with a face full of makeup, there you go. And uh, shockingly, if her presence is not enough, the comment about the guy's underwear at the end really puts it over. Seems like there's less of everything these days. <clears throat> with that, let's move on to my number two pick. Let's follow Elsie and her family through the All-American Hall of Fame. Oh, look, says Beauregard. There's the batting champion. And there's the touchdown champ, says Elma. And there's the swimming champ, cries Beulah. Hey, Pop, says Bo, what made all these people champions? Lots of practice, says Elmer. And lots of milk, adds Elsie. Borden's milk, I bet. The milk with the muscles in it. Yes, that's why they call Borden's the all-American drink. It's a favorite of athletes all over the country. Whatever the sport, whatever the season. Sweet-tasting Borden's. The best-tasting milk around. Ask your mom to buy you plenty of Borden's milk. The All-American Drink. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up. Bye, Borden's today. For those of you who don't know who Elsie is, she was once more popular and more recognizable than Mickey Mouse. The Borden brand has been around since the 1800s, but they really hit their stride in the late 30s, early 40s when they introduced America to Elsie the Cow, she was designed by cartoonist Walter Early, and her full-page spread magazine ads got her a radio show hosted by Ed Wynn, an appearance by the real cow Elsie after whom Elsie was named in the film Little Men in 1940, and she even appeared at the Better Living exhibit at the 1964 New York World's Fair with a musical review. Elsie is known in Wisconsin as the Queen of Dairyland, and she has an honorary doctorate of bovinity, and a doctor in human kindness, and a doctor in economics. I could really talk about Elsie until I'm blue in the face, including the fact that her husband is Elmer's glue. She is iconic, she is perfection, she is part of American history, and she's one of the most interesting furry characters ever designed, especially when you consider how famous she was at her peak. Now, this commercial is from the 50s, but there are even commercials from the 70s featuring Elsie with her trademark daisies. Thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, 
Dad! Dad! What? Yeah. Well, boys, ready for refreshments? A nice cold glass of Borden milk will cool you off. When you need a boost, try Borden milk. Because if it's Borden, it's got to be good. Okay, one more time. Say what you will about how cute Elsie is, but for those among us who like bigger guys, Elmer is quite a trophy, despite his uh, temper. If you go to your grocery store today, I guarantee you, you will find Elsie's face either on a can of Borden Eagle brand condensed milk in the baking aisle or on a pack of Borden singles. It's kind of amazing how long she stuck around. Now, why don't we move to my number one pick? I'm going to show you two versions of this one. One was shown on television and one is in glorious 35 millimeter film because it was shown, that's right, in theaters. This is The Laughing Cow's Mirror Mirror from 1998 in the UK and Portugal. The mirror never lies. Love. Mirror, mirror, on the wall, am I the luckiest cheese of all? Oh, no, my dear, you're far too heavy. You're too boring. <laughs> you're too hard. On your bike. <laughs> oh, too coarse. Oh. Too thin. <laughs> too strong. Oh. A uh, little tricky to unwrap, I guess. And what about me, Mira on the wall? <laughs> Too artificial. So who is the loveliest then? There is a rather special cow whose cheese is so creamy smooth. She is the loveliest. Her name is the Laughing Cow. The mirror never lies. Mirror, mirror on the wall, is mine the loveliest cheese of all? Oh no, my dear, you're far too dull. <laughs> you're too hard on your bike. A uh, little tricky to unwrap, I think. And what about me, Mira of the <laughs> Too artificial. So who is the loveliest then? A rather special cow whose creamy smooth cheese also comes in cheese dippers. She is the loveliest. Her name is the Laughing Cow. So this by now familiar ad formula was produced by TWA Lisbon. It was directed by Steve Small, art directed by Pedro Bidar. And the production company was Richard Purdom Productions. This ad was either nominated or won a British Eras Award. I can't really find a definite answer one way or the other, but its charm is palpable from the very first moment. It's a retelling of a classic fairy tale, but with a bunch of beautiful cow ladies looking into various mirrors while a body shaming narrator chastises them for what is usually their most interesting feature. There is a ton of charm in each of these designs. They are exceedingly well animated, smooth, beautiful, and there's a lot of personality given to the various mirrors that frame them. However, despite what the Laughing Cow Company would want you to believe, the quote unquote not good enough chubby actress cow is really the star here. She has the most attention put into her expressions and the most animation. Check out these faces she makes when she gets the news. Yeah, that would devastate me too. But don't worry, honey, you don't need to be giving milk. You're an actress. In fact, all these other cows have something going on. There's an opera star, there's a school teacher, a biker. What do they need to be giving milk for? Why is this narrator picking on them? I think the laughing cow should get a grip because she was designed at a time when things were very simple and her design does not really carry over too well into this detailed 2D. In fact, the more detailed the animation gets, the less she even looks like a cow. She's just kind of a weird yawning creature. She looks like maybe a mascot for a baseball team or something. Anyway, I'm going to say that all cows are created equal and some cows are hotter than others. By the way, the amazing character designs in this commercial come from Gary Dunn. Gary Dunn is an industry veteran from the UK with a 30-year career. His body of work is enormous, so I encourage you to check him out. And on his Instagram page, he has a ton of interesting posts with character design sketches, animation tests, and some familiar faces. And here in this piece he did to commemorate his work in 1998, we can see the opera cow hanging out. So there's our, there's our connection from the past to the present. In fact, Gary Dunn's work just won an Oscar. He animated in The Boy, The Mole, The Fox, and The Horse, which won the Oscar this year, 2023, for Best Animated Film. 
So it just goes to show you that many of these talented individuals working in the 90s still have thriving careers today and are in fact still pushing the industry forward. Let me know if you agree with anything in this episode. If you agree with my lineup, if you think one cow is cuter than another, and I hope to see you in the comments and for my next episode. Until then, this is your dark sorceress Orlina signing off. Ta-ta! As always, I'd love to thank my wonderful Laserdisc supporters on Patreon, Daco, Godel Drury, Manji, Stubadub, Crown, Norman Whitetail, and Mirja. Sorry, I couldn't help myself.